This is the process shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I've seen Zapper, a new surreal comedy film from director Nick Gatsby. Well, it's supposed to be surreal anyways. It certainly wants to be, what with its story about a loosely connected group of gangsters, criminals, and one or two layabouts. All hell-bent on a quest to find the four literal or figurative puzzle pieces necessary to further discover a legendary longboard, which can potentially bring untold fortune to whoever is lucky enough to retrieve it and sell it, I think. As it happens, all of this is a game to a mysterious group of people who simply sit back and hope for a favorable outcome. Of course, as the story plays out, there are plenty of new twists and turns to be found, though I can't say that all of them make much sense, and that's saying something given the surrealism here. I think it might be for the best to start by saying that there might be too much surrealism going on in this movie. The film starts without much explicit context for anything that is going on, and it keeps up this lack of explanation for what is seen or said without really doing anything to justify any of its existence. I mean, it doesn't need to stop dead in its tracks to deliver a mountain of exposition, but these elements just don't flow very naturally. For every little idea that's easy to wave off, like using food as deadly weapons, or a children's toy being repurposed to find one of those puzzle pieces, there are bigger concepts and images that seem to exist more for their own sake. Meanwhile, the story itself seems to come and go without any significant importance or weight in anything being put forth. Character development takes a major blow simply because there's none to be found almost anywhere here. The first scene or two with a character is all the backstory or personality that you get, and every scene with them after that is driven more by events and images over anything else. It makes the characters feel simplified at best and unimportant at worst, not even fulfilling basic archetypes for a crime story or a comedy film. It's ultimately as if the film were written with its surreal ideas in the forefront, and these were all built upon more and more over time, until the goal became more about how much could fit into the story over how much story could fit into the story. Anyways, the emphasis on weirdness and surrealism especially extends into the film's visuals and its other elements. This is most obvious in the color design, which endlessly cycles through a spectrum of tones. It alone almost proves how much of the film's style was done for the sake of appearing surreal, even if in the end it just comes through as an annoyance. The color shifting is especially annoying because of how little it actually works in a storytelling sense, despite its prominence. Other bits of environmental weirdness are usually one and done, and similarly don't seem to have any greater meaning to them beyond their initial appearance. As for the film's other technical details, it's pretty much got the hallmarks of a low-budget production. Camera work is pretty flat and underwhelming, with a few creative shots here and there, but nothing that hasn't been seen before. Audio is similarly uninteresting but they do at least use actual microphones and not just whatever the camera itself could pick up. I will admit there are a handful of interesting, surreal elements in the sound design, but it still isn't anything that's justified by the story itself. Again, I think the easiest way to summarize this film is that it was definitely more concerned with building up its aesthetics than actually using them. The numerous bits of surreal weirdness all add up, and it comes at the expense of the actual underlying storyline. If it weren't for the movie being so loaded with so many ideas, and if it were cut down to whatever is either so simple that it just works, or is actually beneficial to a primary character, the movie probably could have had potential as a midnight cult hit or something along those lines. Instead, this comes through more as an experiment, though what they're trying to discover, I'm not sure. I just know that it wants to be offbeat and off-kilter, 
and it manages to get that across pretty quickly. Unfortunately, the bad part is that it overstays its welcome. Zapper, Nick Gatsby, 2023. Uh, one star. I wouldn't really recommend watching it. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. In the meantime, I need to go stare at a wall for a while to make sure my vision has properly returned. Seriously, that whole color shifting thing ought to be the first thing to go if the director ever considers a recut or something. <laughs>